All right, welcome back to Primetime Instruments. Um, you're rejoining us. I am John Ballard, the band director from West and FCS. This is Mr. Wilson, the venerable Mr. Wilson from the East Band program. Uh, and today he has this peculiar, peculiar, peculiar instrument called the French horn. Tell us about this. Well, the French horn is a lot like the trombone if you curled it all up and made it a little bit skinnier. So the French horn is a brass instrument. So when I play it, I actually buzz. I go, and I buzz into my mouthpiece, which sounds like this. And, uh, and I've said it in the other brass videos, so this is, if, this, you're, if you watch multiple other brass videos, you've heard me do this, but we make songs with our mouthpieces for, uh, for practice. So um, if, we, if we, we like make a song, and we go with like, Mary Had a Little Lamb. That's an exercise for us to do to get used to buzzing. But that's how it makes sounds. Uh, and then we use these uh, valves that are lined up right here. Uh, and I press these buttons to change those. And that's how I, how I, how I change my notes. That's fantastic. Uh, what kind of role does it play in the music? What's its job? I think the French horn is the most underappreciated instrument. I agree, actually. It, you know, it sits right in the middle, uh, so it plays a lot of the same parts as the alto saxophone, uh, but it adds a different tone that you don't get from the alto saxophone, and sometimes it gets its own parts entirely, but it is, when done correctly, an utterly beautiful instrument, and uh, I always personally, at East, have trouble finding and keeping French horn players because at the very beginning it can be a little tricky. Um, if you're someone who has sang a lot, maybe you've taken voice lessons, or maybe you've sang in choir at church or something like that, this is a great instrument for you. It requires a good sense of uh, what we call a good sense of pitch, uh, because being able to hear, uh, hear a note and match that note with what you sing and what you play makes this a lot easier. If, you, if you're someone who uh, maybe is not, don't think of yourself as a good singer or haven't sang a lot, maybe try trumpet. That'd be a good option, I would think, for you. I agree, because when, when you have trumpet, the notes start off farther apart, further apart, so it's easier to find those notes. But when you have a French horn, they're all kind of right up on top of each other. So when he talks about having a good ear, it is so, so important. I like to think of it as like the melted cheese in the middle of the grilled cheese. It has that warm sound that just spreads out and binds everything. It's kind of like the force. Yes. Um, <laughs> where would you find a French horn in its native habitats? So you hear it a lot in band music, but you also hear it a lot in orchestral music. So just like Star Wars we talk about, if you listen to a lot of movie soundtracks, specifically Star Wars, you'll hear a lot of French horn. Um, it's one of those instruments that, that composers go to a lot for types of big sweeping things because it's beautiful. It's just a beautiful instrument. You're not going to hear that from me when I play it. I'm going to do okay, but I encourage you to look up videos of better French horn players than me. Go ahead. <laughs> Most of them. He's actually pretty good. All right, so uh, I'm going to play Harry Potter. That's what I'm going to play. I'm gonna, let, me, let me get the first note, because once you get the first note, it's okay. See? That's actually a harder song to play than people realize. And I'm amazed that you would even try it on a French horn and come out pretty well, man. That was great. I Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Um, I recognize your greatness. Um, so that's the French horn. Do you have anything else to share with the kids? I mean, email us if you have any questions. Oh, one of the other random facts about French horn, if you notice, French horn is the only instrument where actually you put your hand in the bell. It's used to dampen it. Uh, and it changes its sound, which is, it's meant to have your hand in the belt. Uh, but what's really funny is if you take it and close it entirely, you can get some pretty crazy sounds out there. That sounds like a massive beehive. 